What's happening everybody? Tech Kid Geek. I want to talk about Sony and Microsoft E3, game price, games, all that stuff. I want to talk about that situation right there alone because let's talk about, let me talk about Sony first and foremost. I want to talk about how Sony won E3 because a lot of people say they pretty much told what people wanted to hear. The price point was $400, which is perfect. It's not too much. I mean, they didn't come around this time around and act like they was too cocky. You know what I mean? They didn't say, well, we Sony, you're going to buy it anyway. They came out with a good price point, $400, and you, and you can get the camera separate. It's not a forced product on it. They're not making you buy it. It's optional for you. That's what people want. People want choices in the end of the day. Now, they didn't have many games to be um, shown right here. They had games. They, they mostly showed their games at their... Um, Sony conference back in February, but they didn't have any games at E3, but a lot of people say when they announced that they're going to play used games and have no or always online connectivity and things like that, you know, people was like, alright, that's what we want to hear. Like, because with Microsoft, they said you got to check in every 24 hours with the system, they got to be always online. If um, you won't play used games, if you do, you can only live it 10 times. Like, who wants these restrictions on the system you're buying to play games? You want to play games at the end of the day. So. Like I said, with Sony, I'm going to get me one sometime next year, probably next holiday season, because you know the first batch, the first couple of systems are pretty much the, I wouldn't say does, but the risk takers, as I like to put them, because you might get one that's defective, you might not play disc, control night break, things like that. Those are always the first batch. So you give about a year, get all the kinks out. That's what I'm gonna get one. Online, they finally caught up to Microsoft as far as the online, where online chat, online video, you can record stuff like that. I, I mean, that's interesting to some folks, I guess. A lot of people are really excited about that, but me personally, I'm not really caring about sharing my stuff on Facebook and things like that. But you know, to each his own. Whichever one you like, you ever want to go with, let's go for it. Do what you do, enjoy yourself. Now, I want to talk about Microsoft now and how they just pissed me off the way they came off this time around. It's the third system. A lot of people say it's the third system of what they call the curse, where you make so much money off the second system. You get a little cocky, your chest sticks out a little bit, and now you want to act like a fool. And that's what they did. They came off and said, well, we're not going to play used games. You can't do this. you got to always be online. you got to have an online connection. And kind of had this smug attitude talking about, well, if you don't have an internet connection, stick with the Xbox 360. Who in their right mind would say that to people like that? You want people to buy your system, but you're going to come off like that. And... That's what got me so upset at the end of the day. How are you going to come off so smug like that? After we just supported your system, bought your games, after the first batch of them was so broke that you had the red ring of death, and now you had to give us a three-year warranty, but then you turn around and change it. You know what I mean? So how could you come off like that? So here's the shocker that I thought was so funny. Days after that E3 conference is how they changed the policy of their DRM policy. Now you can play used games. Now you can do this. Now you can do that. No more. No always on now. But there is a stipulation with that. They did say that you need to have the um, internet connection for the first time you boot up the system. So it's it's give or take. So it's one of those type of situations where okay, you work with us, but you still came off wrong. But what I don't like is the price point. Five hundred dollars. You're forcing connect on people saying you need this in your living room. I don't need it in my living room. If I want it, let me get it optional. Don't force it on me telling me I need this. So the price point is at $500. How fast are you going to have to do a redesign or a strip down or whatever you want to do to get the price down to a competitive price with Sony? Because Sony's going to sell. Sony got a long list of customers. The PS2 sold 155 million copies, a million systems worldwide. So they have a fan base. And at the end of the day, people want to buy a system. I'm going to buy a new one. There's going to be some games on there I like. So you can't come off smug like that and then change the tone because all of a sudden you're getting the bad press. See, that's where people start to hate when coming to do stuff like this. So it's one of these type of situations. I just want to talk about a little bit of everything about this situation because, you know, Sony won E3, hands down. Now, as far as Nintendo, first party games, that's what they do. They lock it down with first party games. That's what they do. They, they make great titles for their system. And the Wii, that was the same thing with the Wii. They had games that, you know, worked around what they do best with the motion sensor and things like that. Now, with the Wii U, it's the same thing. Wii U has great potential, but a lot of third-party developers don't like it because it's just, they feel like it's gimmicky. And that's, you know, what can I say? You know, when your people feel like your system is gimmicky, it's hard to sell. And this is pretty much this video. I just want to talk about a little bit about Microsoft, Nintendo, 
the Sony and just like kind of let let people know how people feel and how they even came off negative like that. Now, Sony and Microsoft pretty much had the same identical system in some ways, but see, Microsoft has an eight-core system that was uh, eight-core CPU custom made by what they designed or whatever they're trying to do. Where Sony got the same thing with an AMD processor, that's, well AMD CPU that's eight-core as well, but the Sony has DDR5. 8 gigs of RAM, so that's a pretty much faster RAM than what the um, Xbox One DDR3 has. So they both have 500 gig hard drives, but the Sony is in exchange where you can um, change them out and things like that. Which a lot of people like options like that because they say hard drives fail and they don't want to be stuck with a hard drive they can't get rid of. Perfectly fine. And you know the controllers and the online thing, it's pretty much identical. Like I said, these systems are identical. It's just going to be the first party or an exclusive titles that's going to come to either system. So. At the end of the day, it's going to be your choice. And with me, I'm going to go with, I'm going to get both of them. I'm going to get me a, a PlayStation 4 and a uh, Xbox One. I was about to say 360 for a second. But, you know, because that's what I am. I, I usually get both anyway. If I like the system, well, it's going to be games that I like on the PlayStation. It's going to be games I like on the Xbox. So I'm always going to get both. So this is the end of this video. I just want to hear what you guys think. And let me know how you feel. You know, always rate and subscribe to my channel. And thank you guys for watching this video. All you guys who did and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for that. And always leave those comments on. Vid out. Let me know. Let me know how you feel at the end of the day. Thank you guys for watching. See you later.